So if you're curious at all about my setup, this is actually a stand that I purchased specifically for housing printers. You can see down here I have some larger format, actually inkjet printers, but here are my 3D printers. Um, you'll notice here I've got each printer uh, stationed uh, here. There's, this is called a slap mat. This is actually really more for resin type printers, which we'll explore a bit more later. Uh, here's actually filament boxes that I constructed. And you can see there's a humidity and a temperature gauge here. One thing that's very important as you begin 3D printing, particularly if you live in a more humid climate, is ensuring that your filament remains dry. Filaments, PLA in particular, uh, has a ability to kind of soak in water and as it gets more humid, it tends to become brittle. So uh, keeping it relatively dry is extremely important. And so these boxes here actually keep the humidity around 29% uh, percent, uh, on average. Um, so that's very helpful. Also, each of these spools is on a roller and the roller allows it to feed properly as the printer pulls it in. Uh, and we'll talk a bit more about how the printers actually work uh, in a second. Uh, but overall, this is my setup. I've got a camera here where I can monitor print jobs, and that's important because sometimes prints fail. Uh, you want to make sure that there's not a, a big mess or a fire that could potentially break out. There is risk uh, involved with 3D printing, uh, but that is the reason for the camera. Uh, and then, of course, there's various other tools here. Scissors. I've got some cutters. Uh, there's other tools and parts here that I keep on hand. So this is my setup. So taking a closer look, this is an FDM type printer, and uh, this is made by a company called Prusa. And this is considered, you know, really the top of the line, sort of best of the breed printer that you can get today in this particular style. There's different types of printers. This particular one is called a Cartesian style printer. And the reason for that is you can see that it has a bed here. And this is a heated bed, which means that the temperature of the bed rises up. And as you can see, the bed itself goes back and forth while the actual print head goes side to side and up and down. So that's your X, Y, and Z axis. The different components here, you can see that there's these stepper motors, uh, one on each side here that moves the uh, print head up and down. There's also a set of motors down here with, you can see some belts that actually moves the bed back and forth. Here you can see the filament as it uh, enters. It's coming off of a Bowden tube. I've got a tube essentially coming from my dry box uh, here, but you can see this particular filament, and this is a wood uh, filament that's coming uh, through here. Uh, it enters into, uh, this is a direct drive. This is called the extruder motor, and it actually pulls it down into the heater where it essentially uh, melts it, and then it comes out of the nozzle. Um, you can't see the nozzle in this shot because it's down here on the print bed. But there's also a set of fans here which help to cool uh, not only the filament but also uh, keep the actual um, nozzle cool. Uh, over here on this side, I'm not sure if you can see that well, but it is a, uh, a sensor, a bed sensor. And this helps to ensure that as the uh, printer uh, goes down, it self calibrates. And that's important because you want to make sure that the nozzle uh, doesn't go too far down where it scratches the bed, but you also want to make sure it's not too high up uh, and for the initial layer so that the layer really adheres well to the bed. And you can see here that this first layer, and this is only the first layer of this print, is a, pr a pretty large print. Uh, as you can see, it takes up almost the entire bed. Uh, you want to make sure it, it has really good adhesion to that surface, and that's the reason why the bed itself is heated, uh, and we make sure that the, uh, the nozzle is appropriately calibrated. Uh, here is a control screen down here. You can see a control knob, some information displayed here on the particular print job. Uh, and overall, this is uh, the basic um, design of a printer. One thing this does have that you can't see in the photo is was, was what's called a filament runout sensor. And there's actually a better one. If you look here at this particular printer, this has a filament runout sensor as well. Um, and what this does is if you run out of filament, you want to ensure that the print job pauses. Um, these printers have a resume feature so that if the filament does run out, you have the ability to replace it and the print job will continue. Um, so really, you know, they've put a lot of really great technology into these. They've really grown uh, in capabilities over the last several years, and Prusa has really done a great job of refining their machines over and over again. Uh, and almost with every firmware update, it's, it's more improved and there's new features added. Really a fantastic product.